A cold drink on a hot day. It's one of life's simple pleasures. Our thirst grows with every bead of water that rolls down the side of the glass. But if that water is dripping from your chilled water piping system, the picture isn't quite so appealing. Condensation on cold pipes causes a loss in insulation performance, staining and damage of ceiling tiles, and creates puddles on the floor. This is Owens Corning Vapor Wick, a unique product created to solve the insulation and condensation problems that have always plagued cold water piping applications. Vapor Wick, perfected by Owens Corning's own science and technology team, keeps insulation dry by using a specially designed wicking material to absorb condensed water from the pipe surface and wick it to the outside where it can harmlessly evaporate. It is designed to be used for chilled piping systems operating at 32 degrees Fahrenheit all the way to 220 degrees Fahrenheit, thereby accommodating dual piping systems. A major vapor wick advantage is that it can be installed directly over wet piping, so systems don't need to be shut down during the product's installation. VaporWick meets the requirements for mold and fungi resistance by providing no sustenance for mold to propagate. And with a flame spread rating of 25 or less and a smoke development rating of 50 or less, VaporWick will be granted immediate building code approval for use in air plenums and other critical locations. As a professional, you will be pleased to know that VaporWick is very easy and forgiving to install. VaporWick has proven Owens Corning pipe insulation at its core. It cuts, handles, and feels the same. The product is available in standard white and in black, which is often used in exposed ceilings. You can use the same simple tools that you're already accustomed to. You'll also find that you only need to apply mastic on terminations, which is a significant improvement versus traditional systems that attempt to seal moisture out. This saves you both time and money. Before you begin, be sure you have the proper safety equipment available, including a long sleeve shirt or jacket, safety glasses, ear protection, and a hard hat where required. No specialized tools are required. You'll need a sharp knife, scissors for cutting the wick material, tape measure, and other tools required for the pipe hangers that you may be using. Vapor wick pipe insulation sections, along with its accessories, now provide a true moisture management system. Accessories include wicking rolls for fittings, sealing tape, wick skirts for vertical applications, and moisture repelling inserts for fittings. Some additional vapor wick system products may be required for specialized installations, but we'll discuss those later in this video. The typical installation process is to wrap all fittings with wicking rolls first and then insulate the horizontal or vertical runs. This will assure the wicking material provides continuous path through the system when installation is complete. The most common vapor wick installation is the horizontal run. Vapor wick can be run to any length necessary with full effectiveness. The key to bear in mind during installation is that there must be a continuous connection or path of wick material throughout the system. This includes all pipe, flanges, valves, and hangers. We'll tell you exactly how to achieve this as we proceed through this video. In addition, any old insulation should be removed prior to installing vapor wick to ensure proper wicking. Vapor wick is not intended to be installed over existing insulation. The most important difference in installing vapor wick as opposed to standard insulation is that the section should be installed with a slit and evaporation holes on the bottom. This is critical for vapor wick to function properly. Additionally, the evaporation holes must remain exposed to allow for proper evaporation with the exception of closed circumferential joints, taping verticals, and directly above pipe hanger saddles. Vapor wick can even be installed over wet pipes. 
This eliminates or reduces the need to shut down work or manufacturing processes and can be a major benefit in installations such as hospitals. However, if the pipe is rusted or corroded, clean the surface as well as possible before beginning the installation. Unlike many other products, VaporWix Polymer Jacket provides no sustenance for mold growth, and it's easy to clean if it's inadvertently soiled during handling. Simply wipe off any dirt or dust that accumulates on the surface. VaporWix cuts easily with just a sharp knife. The recommended technique is to pull the wick material out of the core and fold it back across the surface. This allows you to create a clean cut of the insulation, the wick, and the polymer facing. Whenever possible, set vapor wick in place on pipe without sliding so the wick is not wrinkled or pulled out of position. However, if you do need to move the section to extend through a wall, for example, you can first place two strips of vapor wick sealing tape inside the pipe. Then, install the vapor wick section, slide it to the final location, and carefully remove the tape. After each section is in place, make certain the jacket is clean and dry. Remove the protective tape over the adhesive strip. Then carefully pull the facing tight and press it into place. However, use caution not to pull the facing too tight, which may cause it to pucker. If you have a problem, you can reposition the seam for up to a minute, which is an advantage over other competitive closure tapes. Then smooth the seam with a hard plastic squeegee to seal the system. The next section should be installed using the same techniques, being careful that each section is butted tightly against the previous section. When applying the butt tape, the recommended technique is to carefully lay the tape on the joint and seal the system with a squeegee. This will allow for a clean and smooth appearance without puckering the facing. Any exposed ends of VaporWix sections need to be coated with mastic to seal the system. Caution should be taken to assure the mastic is a vapor barrier and not a weather barrier, as they serve different applications. Although the vapor wick system does not depend as fully on vapor retarders as do other types of insulation, it is important to seal the system. This reduces the moisture load on the system. However, when applying mastic, be particularly careful not to block the evaporation holes on adjacent pipe sections. Straight horizontal runs of vapor wick are just that easy to install. And unlike some other products, there is no need for extensive labor to fabricate brittle sections, again saving time and money. To ensure that vertical installations perform as designed, Owens Corning recommends the following procedure. Install individual sections as we have described with secure seals of the face closing and lap strips between the sections. Close the holes of all vertical sections using two overlapping strips of sealing tape. Seal any exposed ends with mastic. The vapor wick wicking system will then transport any moisture that does accumulate in the system to the nearest horizontal section where it will evaporate. In instances where there are no horizontal sections with more than six inches of open evaporation holes, do not seal the holes for a six inch length at the bottom of a vertical. For any long vertical runs or horizontal runs with limited evaporation grid area, we recommend using our wick skirt or hula skirt. This accessory helps prevent moisture overload on adjoining horizontal sections by providing a break that decreases the moisture flow on the vertical sections. Our hula skirt can also assist in managing moisture in other areas such as mechanical room applications where sufficient evaporator grid area is limited on horizontal pipe sections. The hula skirt is wrapped around the pipe adjacent to a standard vapor wick section. Place the individual wicks over the end of this section and down the sides. Then, install another section of vapor wick over the hula skirt and in tight contact with the adjacent section. Finally, wrap the hula skirt and joint with vapor wick perforated tape and squeegee the seams smoothly closed. With pipe hangers such as this one, 
Simply wrap it with wick, fillet the pipe insulation to fit the hanger, and seal it with mastic and tape. For fire stop applications, follow the same installation process as for our standard fiberglass pipe for terminations on each side of the fire stop. With the techniques you can learn from this video, installing vapor wick over bends, valves, flanges, and fittings is really a very straightforward process. The basic key to success is to remember that the vapor wick relies on a continuous run of wicking material throughout the entire system that transfers condensed moisture to the outside, allowing it to evaporate. The installation rule is this. Pipe bends, valves, flanges and fittings are to be substantially wrapped with vapor wick wicking material. The wrapped wick must extend at least one inch past the nearest exposed evaporation holes to ensure a continuous path with the adjacent piping. Once the fitting is wrapped with wicking material, it may be secured using tape or by adhering to itself. The wick is available from Owens Corning in two sizes. These sizes are 3 inches and 12 inches wide by 150 feet long. The larger wick is used for wrapping large flanges. Standard site fabricated connections such as mitered, segmented, or fish mouth are recommended for bends and fittings. This will maximize the evaporation area. To complete a true moisture management system, Owens Corning recommends using vapor wick fiberglass inserts or molded preformed fittings with PVC covers. Fiberglass inserts should be hydrophobic or water repelling and the same thickness as the adjacent piping. Fitting should be sealed with vapor wick sealing tape or with mastic if desired. Vapor wick sealing tape was specifically designed to adhere to and match the vapor wick jacket and is available in 3 inch by 150 foot rolls. Standard oversizing practices with vapor wick insulation sections must be used for valves and flanges. Ensure that the vapor wick holes are aligned on the bottom, as we discussed earlier. When selecting ball valves that extend through the vapor wick, be certain that their shaft is long enough to extend through the insulation and clear of the jacket. This allows you to operate the valve easily without damaging the vapor wick system. Other valves, gauges, strainers, flex connectors, butterfly valves, and pumps can all be easily insulated using standard techniques. We'll demonstrate how to approach a more complex installation using this stack in a mechanical room as an example. There are five steps in the process. First, pre-wrap all valves, elbows, flanges, or other components that will not be directly insulated with vapor wick pipe. Extend the wick out far enough to ensure that the system will have a continuous path for moisture to follow. Second, install any straight sections of vapor wick over the main pipe, as well as any extensions. We recommend using a hula skirt if there is a limited amount of horizontal evaporation grid area available. The third step is to install all elbows using vapor wick inserts or molded preformed fittings with PVC covers. It's a good idea to cut away a portion of the cover that may block adjacent grid holes to maximize the system's evaporation capacity. Fourth, cover all valves, flanges and other irregular devices using standard oversize installation techniques. And finally, use mastic to close all open ends to seal the completed system and cover all vertical evaporation holes with vapor wick sealing tape. When applying the mastic, be careful not to cover any adjacent evaporation holes in the process. The important overall points to remember are to make certain that there is a continuous run of wicking throughout the system, keep the evaporation holes facing down, and seal all terminations. If you are installing vapor wick on piping extending out from an air handler, ensure that the opening is sealed with a factory grommet. If not, use caulk to seal this opening. This prevents moisture from inside the unit migrating into the insulation. In addition, mastic the vapor wick section where it contacts the factory grommet to seal the system. 
Owens Corning recommends Clevis hangers as the best support system in vapor wick installations. When properly installed with insert blocks, they will create a strong, stable system that allows the vapor wick evaporation process to operate efficiently. This is the basic process. First, with a sharp knife, cut through the wick and insulation and remove a small section of insulation. The thickness of the block should equal the thickness of the insulation. Staple a high-density fiberglass insert in place through the wick material. We recommend high-density blocks such as fiberglass, foam, and cellular glass. We don't recommend wood and calcium silicate blocks as they can absorb moisture and result in a system failure. With two overlapping parallel strips of vapor wick sealing tape, cover the evaporating holes above where the hanger will rest. The length of the strip should be equal or slightly larger than the length of the metal hanger saddle to avoid moisture buildup concerns on the saddle. This video should have answered most of your questions regarding the proper installation techniques for the vapor wick system. However, there are always special circumstances where you will have to make a judgment call. 